So I saw this at the flea market the other day. It was sticking to some other stuff because it's magnetic and I got curious to know what it was. Well, I asked the guy there and he said, it's an isolator. You send a signal into one side and it'll come out the other, but if you send a signal the other way into here, it doesn't come back out. And it works around a gigahertz. And I thought to myself, that's impossible. That a passive component would be able to block a signal from coming back to its source? I gotta see what's inside. And I gotta find out what magnetism has to do with it. Now let's take a look at it before we take it apart. It has two connectors, one, two. They are SMA type connections. And then we have a third almost SMA connection here. It doesn't connect to anything, obviously. But it, it has screws just like the other ones do. So I'm curious to know what that is. Now you can see that they put glue into the screw holes and glue between all of the components. And that's not uncommon in RF stuff because spatial tolerances are very important. Um, even when the device is shaking and under thermal stress, in order to maintain its performance, everything should stay in the same position. So this might be kind of painful to take apart. We'll see. Okay, that wasn't painful at all. It only took two hours and I screwed up one of my screwdrivers and I broke one of these screws and I used a hammer and a, an anvil and I used a drill press. Um, and yeah, um, this thing really was not intended to be taken apart. Um, everything was glued together. These pieces of sheet metal had to be peeled off. This one had to be peeled off in order to take it apart. Even the screws were glued in place. <laughs> it was very, very painful. So let's take those out of the way. Now the top cover is a piece of aluminum. It has a hole milled out with a magnet sitting inside. And it has this piece of what appears to be ferrite stuck to it, which it's not permanently magnetized, but it makes sure that the magnetic flux from this magnet goes through the center to the isolator itself. So the isolator itself is really just, it's very, very simple. It's really just a piece of copper that connects this to this and to this, our mystery connector at the bottom. So as you can see, there would be a uniform magnetic field uh, perpendicular to the face of that piece of copper. And that's it really. Um, the other piece is just another magnet and another piece of ferrite in the middle. And when these two are sandwiched together, they sandwich this copper in the middle. So they keep a uniform magnetic field flowing through this surface. So if you're anything like me, at this point you're wondering, what in the hell? How does this work? Well, let me explain. Fundamentally, an isolator is built around a circulator, which looks something like this. And when you subject the inside piece of copper to a uniform magnetic field, it will cause the wave to be deflected, much like the Hall effect works. Except that in this case, unlike the Hall effect, we are trying to deflect a, a wave, a traveling electromagnetic wave, rather than deflecting a static current. And the nice thing is that waves travel much faster than currents, so for a given magnetic field strength, it would be deflected more than a static current. When we uniformly apply a magnetic field to the center region and send a signal, let's give these names, let's call this A, B, and C. If we send a signal down into A, it will come into here and it will be deflected up and come out of B. Likewise, a signal being sent into B will be deflected the same way downward down to C. And then a signal coming into C will be deflected up into A. Now the difference with an isolator is that unlike a circulator, we give it only two terminals, only A and B. We remove terminal C and instead connect it through a termination resistor to the case. So any signal that comes to this termination resistor will simply be absorbed. And so you can see that now if we send a signal into A, it will come directly out of B, but if we send a signal into B, it will come down to C and be absorbed, and so therefore nothing will come back to A. Very clever. 
So now, instead of calling it a circulator, we call it an isolator. Let's take a final look at it before we wrap this up. Unlike a circulator, which would have three terminals, this is an isolator, where this third terminal is um, terminated directly to the case, so anything that goes into it gets absorbed. Well, that was interesting. Now we can toss it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I have a bunch of these now. I can't do anything with them yet because I don't have any equipment that'll work to a gigahertz. But as soon as I do, I'll be sure to create another video. If you enjoyed that, please like this video and let me know what else you'd like to see. Bye!